okay? So you want to be able to, when you're working with a client, put all of your personal biases and beliefs and thought systems and values, you know, and put them in the back of your mind because your responsibility, your purpose of even earning money in the transaction is to help the client. So you have to stop and ask, what is important to my client? You know, why are they moving? What are they looking for? What is the problem that I need to solve for them? And do I have local knowledge and expertise that can help to make this better for them? To show them things that they're not aware, that they don't know, that they don't know, that can help guide them through the process so that they can make a smart investment choice. You know, you always have to be thinking about your client and doing what is best for the client within the guidelines of the law and what is ethical and what is right and what is moral, but always with the, the mindset that I am working on the behalf of the good of my client. Okay, we're back. All right, so right now I wanna talk about this contest that I heard that you're doing. And the contest is to create the best flyer for the house. So that is awesome. Um, where do you start? You know, you start thinking about that. You can really get lost in the details and they say analysis is paralysis. So don't go there. Make this simple. Think about what are the selling points of this home? So if I had to tell you about this development that we're doing in Immokalee and I only had 15 seconds to tell you the most important things about it and what makes it unique, what would I say? You know, whenever I sit down to put a listing in the MLS and make a marketing packet for it, I always stop and I think, what are the key selling points of this home? So let me grab one. Here's my newest listing, just went pending, and this one is 9731 Mar Largo Circle. So the very first photo I have is the pool, and this is the selling feature of this house. The pool is incredible. It's got this amazing pool area, which is heated by solar and propane. It has a spa. It has this awesome enclosed lanai area with the string lights and i don't know if you can see it here but there's different fountains and all kinds of fun stuff going on and it's actually on the lake so you can see the lake view there and the house just wraps around and so this is the image that we show first to capture attention because we are trying to find someone who wants a pool home not just a pool home a lakefront pool home and then we tell them well it's also located close to the beach and it's in a gated community that has super low fees. And you can actually, you can see there's a flagpole. That's unique because most HOAs will not allow you to be very individualistic. You've got to follow the rules. So this community actually will allow you to put up your own flag that you want. It's got a bench by the lake. It's a really cool home. Now, there's some things about the home that people don't like. You know, and we don't we don't play those features up. We play up the selling points of the home. And so when you are getting ready to, when you're getting ready to make your house flyer, think about what is the key selling feature of this home? Why is it different than anything else? and that is called your USP, your unique selling proposition. And if you can provide something to the consumer that they don't have anywhere else, or that they can't get that price point, or that they can't get this new, and you can capture their attention in that way, then that is going to be the best house flyer in my opinion. But I'm excited to see who creates the best one. Don't worry about the details. Everyone gets so worried about little, little details and fonts and stuff. You just go for 
how do I capture the essence of this home? The next topic that I want to talk about is how do I prepare for an appointment? All right, so specifically new construction, you are walking into the development where you've got this 18 home subdivision and you've gotten the call that uh, you're going to be meeting a prospective buyer there and you know that they're interested in the community and they're there to see it in person and learn more about it. So what do you do to prepare for that? Well, the first thing you want to do is make sure in advance that you've studied everything about the community, that you know the you know where the house is at. Okay, that's a good starting point. You show up early or at least on time. You have some paper in your hand that you can give to them that they can walk away with if they're interested. Have your business card or have some way that they can get, you know, follow up with you and take action. And you'll want to know by heart or at least have on paper important things about it, like how many homes are going to be in the development? When, are, when is the development going to be done? Um, what kind of construction is the home? Is it wood frame or is it concrete block? Is it in a, a flood zone that the lender would require them to have flood insurance? Is there a homeowners association? If there is, do you have a copy of the deed of restrictions that say what the rules are? Um, how much, in, and, that, and that's a whole can of worms there that you can ask questions. What are the pet restrictions? What are the rental restrictions? Um, how much are the fees? What kind of amenities are provided? and have their financials available to show. Who's the developer? What's the reputation of the developer? Um, how long is the build time? Do you have any of the inventory homes that are available now versus, you know, are they, are they spec homes where they're gonna be built and you buy it? Or does the client get to build their own? And if so, is it taking six months, eight months? Can they customize it? Can they move walls or at least choose cabinet or paint colors or flooring? Um, what are the closing costs? So is, are there any one-time fees at closing for capital contribution or transfer fees? Not necessarily all a bad thing because those monies go into funding the reserves for the community. And it's important that a community has strong financials. Um, what kind of taxes? are you going to have there? Is it in an area where you have additional layers of taxation to, besides just the county or city? You know, like a, a community development district or a municipal tax service unit where the, the infrastructure is built out and you pay for that on your taxes. Um, you know, where is this home in proximity to the amenities within the community or the major roadways, you know, how is access restricted into the community or is it at all? Um, what is the exposure of the home? So this is a big one in Florida. Everyone wants a Southern exposure home. And what that means is the back of the home faces South because in Florida, you know, in the winter time when everyone's here, the sun has a Southern tilt to it. So it rises in the east, sets in the west, but on a southern tilt. So if the pool is on the south side of the home, it gets full sun all day. If it's on the north side of the home, sometimes your pool can be cold. So those kind of things. Is that important? Or do you have a client who has melanoma and doesn't want any sun? You know, they want to stay in the shade. So what's the exposure? Um, and then for the home itself, like... Um, all of the building specs you'll want to have from the developer and they'll have the um, permits, the floor plan, the um, energy efficiency ratings, 
the type of utilities that are in the home. Um, what This is a big one. What is the internet speed? Do you have access to high speed internet and fiber optic cable or are we on a dial up? Um, is there going to be a septic mound? Um, is there going to be well water or city water? What kind of filtration will be there? All of these questions. These are things that you want to know about a property and don't feel like you have to know everything about every single house all the time and recall that information, but you should at least have the answers right away with you or be able to get them right away. And following up with the clients and letting them know the answers to all of these things are really important. So you're there to make it easy and to have the answers for them. When you are walking the house with them, sometimes um, when the drywall isn't up yet, it can be hard to envision. So it sometimes the, the developer will have a model and that's helpful to show the model, but also to know that the model might have upgrades that are not standard. So knowing the list of standard upgrades versus you know, what the developer can put in or you can put in later and what the costs are on that. Those are all important. And then when they do get to the point where they're thinking about making an offer, they want to make sure that they're getting a fair deal. So you'll want to have some knowledge about what the other units or homes have sold for recently. And not just the selling price, but what were the differences between those homes? And you know, this is part of going into a market analysis and what makes one home different than the other and why one might have sold for 20,000 more than the other home. Um, once you have gotten to the point where they're ready to make the offer, then with new construction, often you're using the developer's contract and they'll have an on-site sales agent that is readily available to help to write that contract. And as a representative of the buyer, you have the opportunity to review it. Mm -hmm. But if it's a resale or if the developer does not have their own contract, then you might use the Florida Association of Realtors standard contracts, depending on which county you're in. I would like to ask a question. So after hearing all of the things that a real estate agent does behind the scenes that you don't even know about to prepare for each individual appointment, which may or may not come to fruition and result in a sale, do you think that the commission that we earn is fair for the job that we do? I'm gonna pause the video and let you answer. Obviously, I can't hear your answers live. I wish that I could. I'm traveling today to be with family for Christmas, but I'm really excited to hear your feedback from your teacher and anything that you'd like to know, any follow-up questions, I'd love to answer them for you. All right, you guys are doing something incredible, really amazing. I am so excited and encouraged about this and I wish that something like this could have been available to me when I was younger to get me thinking about real estate sooner and I just want to commend you. All right, thank you so much for hosting me. I am so honored and can't wait to see how it all turns out.